Welcome to America Today, your trusted source for breaking headlines, global insights, and sharp analysis from around the world. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Semiconductors, tiny pieces of silicon, are the brains of every modern device, from smartphones to supercomputers. For years, the US designed these critical chips, while China was its biggest customer. That relationship has now been upended. In a stunning move, China slashed its US chip imports by $320 billion, a seismic shift in the global tech landscape. This isn't just a trade spat, it's a declaration of technological independence and a pivotal escalation in the US-China tech rivalry. The flow of chips from the US to China fueled American profits and powered China's tech industry. By cutting off this supply, Beijing signals it will no longer depend on its chief rival for the world's most vital technology. The world is splitting into two tech ecosystems, one led by the US and its allies, the other by China. The consequences will ripple from global corporations to everyday consumers. This import cut is unprecedented, representing a massive chunk of the global chip trade. It's the result of years of rising tensions, sanctions, and strategic maneuvering. China is now actively shaping its own tech destiny, aiming for a self-sufficient chip industry that could one day rival the West. The fight for control over the future of technology has begun, and the outcome is far from certain. China's drastic chip import cut was a direct response to tightening U.S. sanctions. The U.S. used its dominance in semiconductors as a geopolitical weapon, aiming to slow China's advances in AI, supercomputing, and military tech. Sanctions started with companies like Huawei, then expanded to block any firm using U.S. technology from supplying advanced chips to China. The restrictions grew, targeting not just finished chips, but also the equipment needed to make them. In September 2025, the U.S. added 32 more entities to its restricted list, including 23 Chinese firms, accusing some of secretly acquiring U.S. chip-making tools. The message was clear, the U.S. would use its technological leverage to contain China's ambitions. These moves created chaos for China's tech sector, severing supply chains and forcing companies to scramble for alternatives. Chinese firms faced the prospect of falling behind global competitors. For Beijing, this vulnerability was unacceptable. Instead of stalling China, the sanctions fueled its determination to break free from foreign tech dependency. The stage was set for China's dramatic and retaliatory import cut. The U.S. hoped to slow China's rise by U.S. Gensam in Doi, Naui, but may have only accelerated it. The tech war had entered a new, unpredictable phase. China didn't just react, it counterattacked with precision. The $320 billion chip import cut was a state-directed pivot, not a simple boycott. In October 2025, Beijing ordered tech giants to halt purchases of high-end US processors like Nvidia's RTX Pro 6000D. The message? The era of relying on American chips is over. China also launched two major investigations into U.S. chip policy, one for anti-discrimination, another for anti-dumping, just before key trade talks. These probes increased China's leverage and created legal headaches for U.S. firms. In a bold move, China's antitrust regulator reopened a case against NVIDIA, accusing it of violating competition laws in a previously approved deal. By wielding its regulatory power, Beijing sent a chilling message to foreign companies. Uncertainty and pressure await those central to the U.S. chip industry. These actions form a sophisticated, multi-pronged response. China is starving U.S. firms of revenue, applying legal pressure, and buying time for its own chip industry to grow. This is more than retaliation, it's a strategic reshaping of the tech battlefield. The goal inflict economic pain on the U.S. while nurturing China's domestic champions. It's a high-stakes gamble but Beijing sees it as essential for long-term security. The tech war is now a contest of endurance and innovation. China's break from American semiconductors sent shockwaves through the U.S. chip industry. For years, China was a crucial market, fueling billions in sales and funding R&D for American firms. The sudden loss of this customer base left a gaping hole in balance sheets and forced a painful business reckoning. The hardest-hit companies specializing in high-performance processors for AI and data centers, the very chips targeted by sanctions and Chinese retaliation, 
Profits plunged, inventories piled up and investors grew nervous. The policies meant to give the US an edge have, in the short term, inflicted economic pain on its most innovative companies. The fallout extends beyond US borders. Taiwanese firms like Unimicron, which supply key chip components, saw their China-based plants suffer from depressed demand. The entire supply chain is being disrupted as companies navigate the growing US-China tech divide. Industry leaders now question whether sanctions are worth the cost. Lost US revenue is fueling China's domestic competitors. The lesson, in a globalized economy, trying to weaken a rival can backfire at home. The chip war's consequences are both immediate and far-reaching. No company embodies the US-China tech war's dilemma like NVIDIA. As the world's top GPU designer, NVIDIA once dominated the Chinese market, with China making up a fifth of its revenue. US export controls banned sales of its most powerful AI chips to China, and Chinese retaliation followed. NVIDIA's market share in China plummeted from 95% to around 50%, and keeps falling. Attempts to sell weaker export-compliant chips failed, Chinese firms turn to domestic alternatives. CEO Jensen Huang has publicly criticized U.S. policy, arguing it's fueling Chinese competitors rather than halting their progress. The sanctions have created a protected market for China's chip designers, costing NVIDIA customers and revenue. Still, NVIDIA isn't giving up. It's developing new chips for China that comply with export rules but remain attractive to buyers. The company's struggle highlights the clash between Washington's security goals and Silicon Valley's business realities. NVIDIA must walk a tightrope serving a critical market while navigating shifting U.S. restrictions. The stakes are enormous for NVIDIA and for the future of global tech leadership. The outcome remains uncertain. U.S. sanctions have backfired, fueling explosive growth in China's domestic chip industry. The China for China strategy, prioritizing local tech for the domestic market, has become an urgent necessity. Chinese firms like Cambricon, once overshadowed by U.S. rivals, are now thriving. Cambricon's revenue soared by 4,300% as Chinese tech giants turned to its AI chips. This isn't a temporary spike. Chinese companies are now building around domestic chips, creating a loyal customer base, and steady funding for innovation. The entire supply chain is benefiting, from software developers, to equipment makers. Zhending Technology, a key chip component supplier, reported a 30% revenue jump thanks to surging local demand. Most significantly, China is making progress in developing its own advanced chip-making equipment, including EUV lithography machines. If successful, China could soon manufacture cutting-edge chips, breaking the West's technological blockade. The global chip race is entering a new era, with China as a true peer competitor. The US-China tech war is fracturing the global semiconductor industry. For decades, chips were designed in the US, made in Taiwan or South Korea, and assembled in China, a model of global interdependence. Now geopolitics is tearing that model apart, the world is splitting into two tech blocks, one led by the US, the other by China. Multinational companies are forced to choose sides, duplicating supply chains at great cost. The AI market illustrates this divide. Once interconnected, the US and China are now building separate incompatible tech ecosystems. This fragmentation risks slower innovation, higher costs, and protectionism. A unified market drove progress. A fractured one threatens redundancy and inefficiency. The chip war isn't just about who leads in tech, it's about whether the world remains connected or builds digital walls. The current trajectory points to a divided future. The chip war isn't just fought in labs, it's a high-stakes diplomatic game. Every move is timed with international negotiations, like China's chip policy probes announced just before key trade talks in Madrid. The agenda is packed, tariffs, export controls, and the fate of TikTok, all intertwined with the tech conflict. Temporary truces and looming deadlines create constant uncertainty, with each side using them as leverage. The US uses its tech edge to pressure China. China wields its vast market and regulatory power to push back. These talks aren't just about trade, they're about setting new rules for global competition. The outcome will shape the tech landscape for decades. The diplomatic chessboard reflects a deeper strategic struggle. The world is watching as the two superpowers define the future of technology. 
China's $320 billion chip import cut is a turning point in economic history. The U.S. imposed strict sanctions to curb China's tech rise. China retaliated by weaponizing its market and accelerating self-sufficiency. The result, a painful blow to U.S. firms and a boom for China's homegrown chip industry. U.S. sanctions have paradoxically nurtured the very rivals they aim to suppress. As China develops its own advanced manufacturing, the West's control over critical tech is slipping. The global supply chain is fracturing into two incompatible ecosystems, one led by the U.S., the other by China. This split will slow innovation, create inefficiencies, and force nations to pick sides. The era of a unified global tech market may be ending. The choices made in Washington and Beijing will determine whether competition escalates or stabilizes. The fight for technological supremacy is the defining contest of our time, and the world's economic future hangs in the balance.